Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitizing Using My Sonet Embroidery Software. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the differences between using the freehand create and the point create tools when you're digitizing. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of My Sonet, or perhaps are just interested in finding out more about embroidery software, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this video, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed. But everything I show you today, you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principles are exactly the same. You might find it useful to watch two earlier films in the series, loading a background and using quick create tools so you understand the principles of how the digitizing module works. I have loaded this picture of a tortoise as a background. I'm in the digitizing um, uh, module and I am going to go to the freehand create tab. Now the default is always um, that both the pattern fill and the satin line um, come up. Now, to start off with, I'm going to just use a satin line. So uh, one very easy, quick way of knocking out pattern fill altogether is I'm just going to click on the top uh, half of that box. And then when I move my pointer away, you can see that this area is now white. So I just know that my satin line is the active area. I'm going to click on the uh, create area or line uh, box here. And again, that's green. So I know that that's active and you might be able to see that my pointer has now sort of turned to a, a little pen. And to start off with, I'm just going to be working in line because I think it's much easier to see the differences uh, uh, that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, trace uh, the top half of the tortoise's shell. So I'm going to start here. So in this case, um, I'm going to uh, hold down a left click and then I am going to move my pointer and as close to that edge as possible. And then when I finished, I'm then going to release that click. And you can see I was a bit wobbly in here. Um, it is possible to use a drawing pad and stylus for this if you want. Um, uh, uh, but as you can see, um, it, it's not necessarily my, my strongest way of working. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the point create tab and exactly the same. It's remembered that I'm, I've chosen that choice of working with a satin line and I'm going to click on create area or line. Now, straight away, you'll be able to see that um, my pointer has has gone back to an arrow. But in this case, I have a little circle by it. And how the point create uh, create area uh, or line works is that um, basically on every click, it lays down a node. And for instance, so you can see I've got a series of these little white nodes the last node is always yellow um, and that's quite useful so that you can actually see sort of almost where you're going. Um, in, in this case, this isn't such a big deal because I'm working on a, a, a line. But if I was working in with area, it's just always useful to see that. I don't know if you can see as well, but at the moment, this is a straight line between these nodes. Now, look what happens when I put my fourth point in they actually become sort of curved in this case. And it is possible, I'm, I've, I've gone back to this node here. If I click down, uh, do a left click, that I can actually uh, click and drag and move my nodes if I want to. Now, what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna come back to this uh, point here and I'm gonna click holding down a shift key. And can you see that has actually turned that node into a square node? And that's because I want to actually lay down uh, a straight edge. So again, what I'm now going to do 
is I'm going to hold down my shift key. Can you see that um, uh, the little circle that's by my pointer has gone square? Because you can plot square nodes, and that's what I'm actually going to do now. So now when I click on, on that, it's laid down that. And again, I want another line. So again, clicking down. And then I've released the shift key. And can you see the little circle alongside has come back? So and again, just like before, I'm going to have to uh, I'm not going to see that curved line till um, uh, essentially my um, uh, th uh, third line on. And again, I've got a, a, uh, to do a, a sharp or a square corner. I'm going to need to hold down my shift key. And then a top tip on in terms of joining is I would always sort of uh, plot your last node close to uh, where uh, you want to join it up. But then hold down that left click and and sort of bring it over. And the reason for doing that is sometimes if you're trying to click exactly on that spot, the software thinks you're actually trying to move that original node. And then at that point, I'm going to do a right click. And you can see that I've got this kind of smooth line that's joined up. Whilst we're on the uh, point create tab over here, there is actually the facility that if you want to, you can draw in a Bezier mode. Um, which if you're familiar with um, uh, programs like Illustrator or Photoshop, you probably would be um, a little bit more familiar with that concept of um, uh, basically drawing curves. Um, it's a sort of slightly more mathematical way. Let me just come in here. I'm just going to. Uh, where, where you can see that basically how I'm working is I'm plotting a point and then in this case I'm holding down a left click and dragging the handles out on uh, my bezier. So let me just, and again, just like before, to finish the line, right click and there's my line. Now, if I actually go back to the Home tab and go to Edit Points, and then click, for instance, on uh, um, uh, I'm actually going to get rid of my Bezier line because that's actually going to confuse me. So I'm, um, uh, you can, I can see that that's the active layer on my uh, film strip. So I'm just going to hit delete. Let's take that out. Um, I've got edit points here. So if I click on here, you can see that I've got my points that if I want to actually come back and I can tweak these, I could move them. I mean, I can sort of really move them if I want to. Um, if I needed to, it might be that I uh, needed to change a square node into a round one or vice versa. You can see how easy it is to do that. But if I click on my freehand line, look at all those nodes. Yes, you can go in and edit them, but because there are so many, it's actually quite a tricky thing to do. So let me just come back off there. So um, I'm just going to go um, back to my freehand tab. And it might be you say, well, Karina, then what's the point in having a freehand create tool? So uh, let me show you what in actual fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and let's put another color change in. I'm going to go with a white so it'll show up and I'm going to go yes to that. OK, and in this case, what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to choose a triple stitch in here. And we're just going to zoom in a little bit just so that you can see. So it might actually be you want an area of sort of quite organic line stitching that maybe you're building up an area of texture that you want something quite random, fluid, flowing. And uh, just so that you do know, the pink cross is telling me where my line of stitching had finished. So they'll always be. So that's because uh, and probably you're going to want to have your stitching quite close to that. So you can actually see 
that this is actually working in quite a fluid way. And let me show you the difference then. I'm on point create. It's remembered triple stitch. And I'm going to go create area now. Oh, and let me turn off my Bezier mode over here. So just click on that. So I've got my pointer with a little round circle by it. I'm going to need to keep clicking on here. And yes, you can do it. You can, but it's actually much slower and it's not such a spontaneous way of working. And the same would be true if we go to freehand create. I'm going to choose pattern fill. I'm actually going to click on the top part of the uh, essentially the border or line. So we're just working in area. Uh, so I'm going to do create area or line. So you can see that if I want quite random shapes, I can draw those in. Whereas if I'm working with point create, again, it's remembered that choice. I'm going to go create area or line. I can be a lot more kind of methodical in the way that I'm working. Or indeed, if I want to follow an area, for example, just move that node down a little bit. There we go. So my um, golden rule of using freehand and point create tools are it's about what you want to do with them. So if you want something that's sort of spontaneous and organic, consider using freehand create. If you want something that's a lot more controllable and that you can edit more easily, consider using point create tools. I hope you found this a useful film. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to our channel, you're not going to miss out on any of our future episodes. Happy sewing.